Hey students, welcome back to Diksha Vedanta English channel. This is Suhas, your chemistry master teacher. Students, in this video, we discuss overall unit, overall chapter under 30 minutes. The chapter is metals and non-metals. We know for metals and non-metals, we can expect 10 to 12 marks. We have an IS to weight and marks age, right? I, IS to weight and marks. Let's discuss. Before entering into the session, please do not forget to like, share, subscribe the channel and also telegram channel. And if you want this notes, it is uploaded in description. Please download it. Okay. Then let's start with physical property of metals and non-metals. We already know we have an many materials as in metals and non-metals. Oh, we differentiate metals and non-metals by using two property. One is called as a physical property and second one is chemical property. Okay, students, in physical property, we have a few properties. Let's start with hardness, right? Hardness, metals are generally hard. For example, iron. We cannot broke iron, right? Yes, iron or R except sodium and potassium. Okay, students. Then non-metals are soft in nature. Similarly, appearance. Non metals are lustrous in nature or metals have a shiny appearance. It's called lustrous. Okay. What about non-metals? Non-metals are opposite. It's simple non-lustrous. Sonority. Sonority in sonority. Sono is there. Sono is nothing but sound, students. Metals produce a sound. It's nothing but metals are sonorous. For example, bell. School bell, right? What about another? Uh, what about non-metals? They are non-sonorous. Non -sonorous. Very simple. Thermal conductivity. Metals are good conductor of heat, whereas non-metals are poor conductor of heat. For example, iron. Right, students? Next, electrical conductivity. Metals are good conductor of electricity, whereas non-metals are poor conductor of electricity. Ductility. Ductility is nothing but metals are ductile. Ductility is nothing but very easy, students. We convert the metals into an, we drawn into a wire. The property, the property of drawn into a wire is called ductile. And also malleable, the property of drawn into paper or sheets, it's called malleable, okay? These are very important property, please concentrate and please note down this point. And also students, in exam, definitely we can accept, we can expect one case-based study from physical property or they, what they do now, what, uh, what they ask now, they give three to four metals and ask, uh, differentiate these metals by their physical property. Here, some expected, uh, some exception are their students here. For example, where is the thermal conductivity? Yes, gallium. If we take a gallium in our palm, now it is easily melt. Okay, it is easily melt. It is nothing but gallium is also a metal, but they are poor conductor of electricity. Okay, student, and also poor conductor of heat. Non-metals in non-metal. Here, yeah, sorry, non-metal diamond. Diamond is also non-metal. Diamond is an allotrope of carbon. We already know, right? We already discussed in unit four. Unit 4 is nothing but carbon and its compounds. Chapter 4, sorry. Okay. It is also non-metal, but it is hard in nature. Okay. That's why the chemical properties come. Next, what about ductil ductility is over now? Non-metals are non-ductile. For example, which is the most ductile metal? Let me know on comment section. This is an over question for you. And also, which is the most malleable metal? Malleable, malleable is nothing but drawn into sheets. Okay. I hope it's clear. Physical property is clear. Okay, in physical property, we can expect only one to two marks or one case based study. Let's move for the chemical property. What is chemical property? If a metal react with any chemicals, what they give? What the product we can expect? By using product, we can easily identify or we can easily differentiate. And also here are some important points is there students, lithium, sodium and potassium are soft metals which can be cut and also diamond. This is an uh, dime, uh, eye melting point and boiling point things. I already explained it. Let's start with the first chemical property. Reaction of metals with oxygen. If metal, if metal is reacted with oxygen or oxygen is nothing but atmospheric oxygen. You already saw, right? If we leave the iron for so many days, what happened? The rusting is happened, right? It is also example for metals reacting with oxygen. In air, in water, we oxygen is there. In end of in end of this units, it is also very important. Rusting, corrosion. We also discuss. Right, students, what happens if metal is reacted with oxygen, it gives metal oxide. For example, in first unit, we already discussed the burning of magnesium air in the presence of oxygen, it yields magnesium oxide, MgO. Right, MgO, it is very important. Yes, it is also, it is also connect first unit. Okay, that's why this part is very important. In exam, we already know chemical reaction is very important if you want. I already do it. I already make a video and I already upload in the channel. Please check once. Okay. And here one important point is there. Sodium is a metal. Sodium and potassium. These are the metal. But we immersed in kerosene oil. Why? 
these are very reactive metals if you open sodium in an open open surface na it absorb heat not an heat sorry it react with oxygen and it blast it releases heat students that's why we kept sodium in kerosene oil very important the case based study questions not in case based competence based competency based is nothing but application level how they ask na from using these points sodium is also a metal but we kept immersed in kerosene oil why okay this is very important please please note down this because sodium and potassium with air is so vigorous and catch fire is kept in open it catch fire and it blasts i hope it is clear students let's move on to the second chemical re property reaction of metals with water and what about reaction of non metal with oxygen it forms a non metal oxide that's all students but metal oxides are always basic in nature what is the meaning of basic if we react this metal oxides with an acid now it yield it yield an metal salt same as same as a neutralization reaction it's a third or fourth chemical property let's discuss okay then what second property metals react with water what happen if metal react with water now they form metal oxide and hydrogen gas first hydrogen gas is rem hydrogen gas is releases then what happened same metal oxide is reacted with another molecule of water to form metal hydroxide then suhas bro what is the final product the final product it guys this one metal hydroxide but depends upon the metal reactivity for example aluminum whenever aluminum is reacted with water or steam na it give aluminum oxide not an aluminum hydroxide but hydrogen gas is releases it is very important how to check hydrogen gas by using pop of pop sound right by using pop sound if we take now burning stick near the hydrogen gas what happen it uh, it gives pop sound as yes, students next we divide metal oxides into two types basic and amphoteric what is the meaning of amphoteric is nothing but it acts as and it shows as and both basic and as well as acidic characters okay for example these are very important very very important definition students in exam they can be asked they ask definitely what is amphoteric oxides or amphoteric metal oxides give an example amphoteric metal oxides is nothing but these metal oxides react with both acid and base but the remaining metal oxides are there na they are basic in nature sodium oxide potassium oxide copper oxide many or basic in nature basic in nature is nothing but these metals these metal oxides not and metals is reacted with acid it reacted with acid right students let's move next reaction of metals with acids what happen if metals are reacted with dilute acid now it gives salt it is salt with hydrogen gas is releases for example magnesium when magnesium is react with hcl or magnesium is dip with the beaker containing or the test tube containing hcl now what happen magnesium forms and magnesium salts with hydrogen gas releases okay students this is an flow of metals okay for example magnesium the rate of formation of h2 gas bubbles is fast and compared to aluminum the copper whenever the copper cu is there na copper is reacted with hcl na they never give reaction why because depends upon the reactivity series very very important topic reactivity series okay and next chemical property reaction of metals with solutions of other metals it is best example for displacement reaction not in single displacement it is a displacement okay not in single displacement in nct it clearly mentioned it's a displacement okay students what happened when metal is reacted with metal other metal solution or other metal salt now what happened for example i am stronger than you guys or you stronger than me what you do you push me you push me out right in the ring if we play in battle now you push me out push me out what happened this a metal pushes this metal same displacement reaction it forms a new metal solution that's all okay what happened depends upon the reactivity reactivity term is very very important and also i already told you many time guys in exam in uh, pyq discussion also i told this is a very important concept by this topic is related to first unit most of the first unit topics now it is related to metals and non metals very important please concentrate next reactivity series it is very important what is reactivity series the reactivity series is nothing but metals can be arranged as according to their reactivity in a series this is called as a 
reactivity series arranged in the decreasing order very important you need to mention decreasing order and in exam write decreasing and then underline the decreasing word underline guys okay i already make a video about the best paper presentation like a pro present the paper like if you if you are if you not watch still if you not guys watch the video now please watch it once okay then this is called reactivity series it is arranged in decreasing order these are the most reactive metals these are the reactivity decreases these are the least reactivity from zinc is there now zinc to hydrogen <laughs> hydrogen access and both metals and non metals we not consider hydrogen just leave that okay in metals also we consider non metals also we consider why because whenever they want it is already have an only single electron for duplet they need another one extra electron it may be at, it may be accept the electron or it may be give it acts as a proton and it it also as an electron okay it also it has an both positive charge and it also both negative charge okay depends upon the opposite encounter ion is there na depends upon that okay students then some metals are there students especially these metals silver okay silver just remove some of the case silver also uh, silver also react with sulfur to form ag2s sulfide okay it is also form rare case but these metals never reacted with oxygen most of the time that's why these metals we called as an noble metal noble gas what is noble gas students noble gas or last 18 group gas is there na they are never react with others why they are stable similarly these are not stable these are also have an lone pair electrons these are also an valence electrons but these are not reactive this or that's why these metals are called as a noble metals it is also competency based question students why golden platinum or reacted or oh, sorry why golden platinum is never react with other acids or other uh, other chemicals or other oxygen why because these are called as a noble metal why because these are are inert in nature same uh, like as a noble gas okay students for this also one one solution is there aqua regia or royal water very very important in quiz also so many student ask this question sir i can't understand this aqua regia solution what is this aqua regia solution sir it is very simple sir whenever we dip the gold in aqua regia na it is dissolve because in uh, in before slide only we discuss gold and platinum or noble metals it's never reacted i only explain right but one solution is there this is called aqua regia solution definitely students to in this year question paper definitely maybe they ask case based from this topic because why na in ncert they mark in red box right very important please concentrate okay yeah, students in this unit we can expect we not expect definitely one cb question is coming case based study questions what is aqua regia solution is nothing but this is an mixture of concentrated hno3 and concentrated hcl solution in the ratio of 1 is to 3 why sir you said like that but here three is to one but in uh, in when i said now i said concentrated hno3 first students please 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 note down this point please note down in any books it depends upon your writing this ratio depends always concentrated hcl it is there in 3 ratio and it is there in 1 ratio it's nothing but 3 ml of concentrated hn hc hcl is plus concentrate 1 ml of concentrated hno3 this is called aqua regia it is also called as a royal water both are same don't be confused in exam okay students let's move let's move for the ionic bond we already know in class 9 also we already discussed stability of atom depends upon their configuration the number of valence electron present in the outermost electron cell outermost electronic cell we have two configuration duplet configuration octet configuration what is duplet the valence shell is contains two electrons are called duplet for example helium here also eight electrons is called octet it is very important we know every metal has an order or has a tendency to attain the noble gas configuration right students for that what happen metals most of the metals contain plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 is nothing but they contain one electron two electron three electron in their outermost valence electrons instead of taking five electrons now why not in proton sorry in nucleus 
we have some efficient protons it can't hold for example in sodium what is the atomic number of sodium guys it's 11 right totally it has a 10 proton okay 10 proton in the nucleus 10 proton can't add, can't handle or can't hold 18 electron instead of taking 7 electron uh, this sodium it easily gives one electron just take it just take and go that is nothing but the sodium gives an one electron for other non-metals non-metals why is our non-metals non-metals sir have a tendency to accept the electron because they valency not in valency they are though yes their charge is minus one chlorine minus one is there minus two minus three it's nothing but they need one two three electron for its valency for its uh for to attend and noble gas configuration what happened this sodium give one electron from their m shell to n chlorine to n chlorine to n chlorine to form NaCl compound this is called ionic compound ionic bond is nothing but one compound shares electron one compound give electron one compound accept electron it is called ionic bond but covalent bond is nothing but both compound shares so not in compound both atom okay sorry for that both atom shares its valence electrons to form a new bond new chemical bond this bond is called as a covalent bond what about ionic bond it, this is a difference between ionic bond and covalent bond in exam in exam maybe they ask give for three marks students give difference between covalent bond and ionic bond very very important these ionic bonds have a high melting point compared to covalent bond these ionic bonds are good conductor of electricity why by yeah why because NaCl is there now for electricity right we need uh, ionized charges right what happened if we dissolve this NaCl especially this ionic bonds this ionic compounds conduct electricity at molten state at their molten state molten state is nothing but their liquid whenever it is in liquid or it is it is dissolved now on that state only these ionic compounds conduct electricity i hope it's clear okay this is called ionic bond next move on to the extraction of metals extraction of metals we know this is our earth this surface is called crust, mantle, inner core, outer core. In crust, we have some minerals and some materials, right? Some minerals and elements or compounds. The elements or compounds occur naturally in our crust, in the upper layer. This is called minerals. What is minerals is nothing. But this is these compounds contain some other important metals or non-metals, something. These are called minerals. Okay, but... Here, there is a huge, huge difference between minerals and ore. For example, these are the example for rock, gems, clay. These are all contain mineral. These are all contains metals or other substance. But ores is nothing but these are the compound. Both are minerals only. Ores is also a mineral. But in ore, we can easily extract the metal, but not in the case of mineral. That is a difference between minerals and ore. Okay, students. For example, minerals and ore. Let's consider clay and bauxite. It's very important. For your MCQ, in MCQ they can be, they may be asked either give an example for aluminium ore. Instead of aluminium ore, if they ask aluminium mineral, in options they give clay, bauxite, everything is gay, is give. Instead of ores, if they ask minerals now, we need to consider both options. In one options they give both A and B. If they ask mineral, we need to choose option C. If they ask ore, we need to choose bauxite. Why? In clay bauxite, both contains aluminium. In bauxite ore, we extract aluminium profitably and conveniently. Some method we extract the aluminium. These are called as a horse. Okay, students. I hope it's understood. Minerals and ore, same concept. It is also there in acid base and some salts. Alkaline. The bases dissolved in water, these bases are called as an alkaline. Right, students? I hope it's clear. All acid, all alkaline or bases, similarly, all ores are minerals, but not all minerals are ores. I hope it's clear. Then, profitable and convenient manner is called as an ore. What is ore? It's nothing but the mineral from which a metal can be extracted by method and conveniently, profitably and conveniently. Conveniently, this is called ore. Okay, students, the process of extracting metals are called as a metallurgy. Metallurgy, very important. Terminology, okay, very important term. Please note down this point. 
Then, this is a flow, this is a step in metallurgy. metallurgy. These are the steps contained in metallurgy. We have three steps in the extract, in extraction of metals. Very important, students. First step, concentration of enrichment of ore. What is concentration or enrichment? It's nothing but if we take any salt in soil, na in soil we have some sticks, some other impurities are all there, na we need to remove for pure soil to construct to construct and uh, in to construct some buildings, na we filter the soil, we filter, hey please do filtering, some uncle told, hey pay, uh, please do filtering and then you use why because. In that soil, we have an, some impurities. It is called as an a concentration. It's nothing but we remove that impurities. This is called concentration. Second step, extraction of metals from their enriched ore. In these steps, students, we have three types, right? Depends upon the reactivity. For highly reactive metal, we have a different method. For mediumly reactive or moderately reactive metals, it's have a different method. And for least reactive, also different method. And next, refining of the impurity extracted metal. We re re what we extract metal after extracting also we have some impurities we need to remove why because metals are easily combined with other metals or uh, whenever we obtain now uh, it may be metal oxides is there some metals are reacted with some metals are easily easily form and bond with other metals also metal mixture is there now we only want pure metals that's why this step also very important okay. In first step, what happened? We remove the impurities, okay? These impurities which are present in the ores during mining, these are called as a gangue. For example, this is ore, this is gangue, is there, impurities is there now. In the first step, we remove that. These impurities are called as a gangue. I hope it's clear. Next, X concentration of enrichment ore. What happened? This ores mined from earth now contained with a large amount of impurities on this one. We remove that. What happened? In concentration of ore, we remove the gangue particle to obtain pure ore. Or concentrate, not in pure ore, concentrated ore. Only contains metals and other metals and other metals. Okay. From using this, we can extract the metals. Next, second step. Extraction of metal from the uh, enriched ore. Student, we are we know metals are react, uh, metals react with oxygen to form metal oxides. If the metal form with oxide now, we can easily, by reduction process, we can easily remove, we can easily extract the metal. But no, no students, depends upon the reactivity, we have an different methods, different methods for extracting. For example, highly reactive metal, highly reactive metals are obtained, or obtained as an oil, halide or oxide ores. We know, name itself, it indicates highly reactive, it is highly reactive, right? It's obtained as an alloy or oxide, for example, rock salts, bauxite is there. Okay. What happened? By using reducing agent, we can we cannot extract the metal. Why? They are only highly reactive. If we use reducing agent now, they only react. Okay. That's why for this we have a different method. The convenient method to extract the highly reactive metals or electrolytic reduction. Very important. Please concentrate here. This is called electrolytic. Extract electrolytic reduction, okay, student. Electrolytic reduction. Whenever they ask uh, in exam, now please draw a diagram. This diagram, this diagram, please draw it, okay. Cathode anode, it's connected to battery. This is a molatile, so okay, yes, liquid, okay. This is a molten, sorry, molatile or molten NaCl, okay. What happened? Yes, students, three points is there. They are two inert electrodes. Okay, we use two inert electrodes. For example, graphite. Graphite is also a good conductor of heat, right? Sorry, good conductor of electricity. We already know, right, students? What happened? The electrode positive negative charge is common. Whenever uh, the current start now, what happened? It is molten NaCl. What happened? If we pass electricity, it forms Na plus and Cl minus. The positive charge is always attracted to the negative end. The negative charge positive end. Yes, see, chlorine molecule Na plus is there now. The Na plus is attracted to cathode sites, chlorine minus it attracted to anode site, it releases chlorine gas. These are the reaction. At cathode, what happened? Sodium metal, Na plus metal, absorb or taken one electron to form sodium. It is called reduction oxidation process. In at cathode, reduction is happened at anode, oxidation is happened. Chlorine metal, chlorine, sorry, chlorine non-metal or Cl minus ion releases two electrons. 
to form a gas or to give uh, to form a Cl2 atom, it releases as a gas as oxidation. Okay, students, this is called as a flux. It's not important. Just leave that. Then extraction of moderately reactive metals. Moderately reactive metals is nothing but zinc is there. Some up to aluminum they are highly reactive. Zinc, iron, these are called as a moderate moderate moderately reactive metals. Here, see uh, these are the example. Hematite ore is there. Zinc blend ore. Calamine, these are the example for moderately reactive metals, not a metals, moderately reactive metal ores. Okay, students, then these are called as a moderately reactive metals ore. I hope it's clear. These moderately reactive metal ore, they, they highly reactive ores are obtained in two forms, right? Halide ore and different halide ore and oxide ore, but these are obtained as a three types or three, uh, three forms. One is carbonate form, sulfide form and oxide form. Students, these are moderately reactive. These metals, if they obtain as an oxide ore, now we can easily extract by using reducing agents. For example, carbon. Whenever we react carbon with carbon with metal oxides, now especially only moderately reactive metal oxide and less reactive metal oxides, it easily form. Uh, it is easily react with oxygen to yield to to release as carbon dioxide gas. Okay, student, I hope is clear. What happened? First, we need to convert the sulfide ore and carbonate ore to oxide ore. Okay, then oxide ore by using reducing agent, we can convert into metal. The conversion of sulfide ores into oxide ores, it is called as an rose theme by using, by using oxygen, by using oxygen. Here there students, a process in which sulfide ores are converted into oxide ores by eating strongly in the presence of excess amount of air. Please concentrate excess. Why? Because in calcination, in calcination is nothing but conversion of carbonate ore to oxide ore, right? In this case, we used only limited amount of here there. This is an example student zinc sulfide. Okay. I hope it's clear. In the limited amount of air, why, sir? In metals is considered, sorry, it consi uh, consists already cal carbonate, right? Carbonate is nothing but carbon is there already. That's why we use only limited amount. Uh, otherwise, this metals is reacted with this carbon and then obtained as a same metal carbonate. I hope it's clear, students. For example, zinc sulfide or ZNS is reacted with oxygen molecule in limited amount of hair. It is heated in the presence of limited amount of hair to yield zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide. Let's move for the moderately reactive metals are clear, right, students? Then extraction of moderately reactive metals, it's already clear. Then second process. Second process, what is the second process? After we obtain, now after we get oxide ore, then by using, by using reducing agent, for example, carbon is there, aluminum, sodium, calcium. By using this, we can easily extract. For example, zinc oxide is reacted with carbon to yield zinc and carbon dioxide. This is called smelting. Okay. Then also, some of the metals or reacted or highly reacted with carbon that's why for few metals for example magnesium and chromium react with carbon to form carbons right that's why instead of carbon we use aluminium this process is called thermite process very important please note on this point it is an highly exothermic that's why the metals obtained now they are they are in the form of a met molten state okay student i hope is clear clear next more the extraction of less reactive for less reactive, these metals are obtained in two cases, oh, obtained in two forms. Which form students? Sulfide form of oxide form. Same student by using roasting process, we extra, we convert sulfide forms to oxide forms. Then by using eating alone, we can easily, what? We can easily obtain the metal eating alone or by using reducing agents. This is for example, for HGO mercury oxide, okay? HGS, we convert HGS to HGO, then heat we get. For example, copper is there, copper is also there. Just leave. Okay, students. Next, last step, refining of metals. Refining is nothing but we refine, we filter the metal. That's all. Okay. Which metal for refining metals, refining of metals, we have an one new method. Okay. One new method is the refining, electrophilic refining method. What happened here? We take impure copper, impure metal as an anode, impure metal as an copper. Sorry, pure copper or any metal as an Cathode, okay, cathode and anode. Impure copper, for example, copper. Here, let's take an example copper. Impure and pure. What happened if you pass electricity now? Here, this reaction is happened. Copper releases two electrons to form a copper, Cu. Then, it attracts two electrons from cathode and it becomes electrolyte. Electrolyte is used as a 
which electrolyte we use it some cuso for other electrolyte okay students what happen at cathode copper copper releases two electron or gain sorry not and releases it gains two electron to form copper metal it is deposited at cathode and also in anode copper releases two electron to form an cu2 plus it is goes into the solution here look here look here copper releases two electrons then it goes to the solution then it moves to the anode side sorry in cathode side that's all whenever from cathode when the electricity pass now it releases two electron this process is happen here after some years some impurities are obtained okay here this is called anode mode very important terminology please note down this point what is anode mode is nothing but insoluble impurities are there now like au ag they are co collected at bottom of the electrolyte okay it is nothing but anode at anode we collect some impurities these are called as an anode mode this is called refining next mode the corrosion what is corrosion we already saw in many areas after the rain after the rain the gate get rusting these are called corrosion the metal is said to corrode this process is called corrosion okay silver ag2s copper here for example silver if we take silver spoon now for long time it converted to this black it white color it converted to black what happened here silver it uh, reacted with h2s in the uh, h2s present in the atmosphere to eat ag2s silver sulfide due to corrosion this is also called corrosion then similarly copper copper is reacted with oxygen carbon dioxide h2o to yield to get basic cop copper carbonate to get as and to change the color as and green copper changes its color if we leave copper for long time now it changes its color to green i hope it's clear this is called rusting rusting or corrosion to prevent corrosion we have so much we have so much method for example we already know aluminum is more reactive than iron uh, compared to iron it is more reactive it easily react with oxygen to form aluminum oxide for preventing corrosion what we do for iron we do aluminum painting or to insert or from the above surface of the iron we attach we attach the aluminum what happened this aluminum is reacted then it prevent the iron rusting that's all students and also prevention second important point we have various ways first one is painting first one already aluminum therapy already clear painting by using painting then from applying oil or grease for example cycle chain right students whenever the cycle chain it is also made up of a metal right we apply some grease or in bike also we applied then galvanization very important galvanization is nothing but depositing thin layer of zinc on the iron zinc layer we dip iron into zinc sulfate why After first, what happened? Zinc is reacted with oxygen to form ZnO. This is acts as a prevent. This is acts as a prevent surface for the iron. Next, this one is happened, right, students? First, to zinc, iron, zinc is formed. Then, zinc is reacted with zinc oxide to form zinc oxide surface. This or next, tin or chrome pa painting. Sorry, plating. Okay, this one, right, students? For carrier. Then, and also last method, alloying. What is alloying? these are like an um these are like an temporary after paint uh, after paint wash out na metal also get uh, corrosion that's why we have a permanent solution this is called as an alloying what is alloying is nothing but we mix two or more metals or two or more metals and non metals for example brass very important definitely they ask definitely in this year maybe they ask cb question from the alloy pot okay students and also metals and non metals for example we have many example okay students alloys in alloys we have some how to prepare alloy first what we do primary metal we melt the primary metal then dissolves other metals in the primary metal from definite proposition we already know in class 9 law of definite proposition always whenever the compound is formed na it is formed in definite proposition definite ratio very important then cooling the mixture to get an alloy this are the some example for alloy don't worry students i upload i upload these notes in the description please check once also please download and please read it these are very important okay students sorry students i think uh, i take more five minutes because it is a too long chapter that's why i take five minutes sorry for that then these are the example alloys then for example these are the alloys okay i hope it's clear this is a last table pure iron is there soft prone we we make an alloy iron uh, alloy they are steel and 
stainless steel. What is the difference between stainless steel and steel? In steel, only we react iron with carbon in the ratio of 0 0.1 into 1.5 ratio. It is an heat and uh, hard and strong. This is hard, stronger, does not rust. Steel, in some cases, steel also get rust, but stainless steel never, <coughs> sorry, never rust. In stainless steel, the iron is reacted with chromium and nickel. We mix three metals here. Iron, chromium, nickel. That's all. Then these are alloys. Then this is also, it is very important, Kutub Minar. Right, students? Why? In, De De in Delhi, so many metals, so many. If, a, if Kutub Minar is not also prevented by getting rusted, right? It contains high content of phosphorus. It is also mixed. In previous, in before years only, the astrologer, the constructor, the, the constructor is there now. They are also have some knowledge. Our philosopher, okay, after thousand Kutub Minar right students, it is now also it not gets tested because it contains high content of phosphorus, right students. I hope it's clear. This is about today's session. If you have any doubt, let me know in the comment section and please do not forget to answer the question. What is the question? Which is the most malleable metal and most ductile metal? I want this answer in comment section and also please give a valuable feedback about this video and also another surprise is there, okay. For that surprise, just look the community and also please do not forget to like, share, subscribe the channel for more updates. Bye. And also please download the notes. It is there in description. Bye, 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 bye.